when change happens, what happens? Typically, people, this turmoil that happens in the organization, when such performance, drastic performance management system change happens, turmoil happens. And happens to all, all of you in your firms when you implement things. And with turmoil comes disengagement, right? And the core job for HR, you know, the core fundamental job for human resource, is to keep the workforce motivated and engaged at all points of time. So with that is my question. So what's the role of human resource technology? Now we'll focus on tech here to keep our workforce engaged. A lot of things we are hearing. We want your thoughts on what you are doing in your organizations. If you're leveraging technology, you can share that. If not, you can share your thoughts around it. Let me specifically talk about the HR transformation model that's happening to a lot of companies. What are the two things that an employee really wants an HR person to talk to? There are only, I mean, if I have to classify it, there are two broad things. One, where it is something so sensitive or gray, where it is not a matter of policy. So I want to find what's a workaround of it. And it's not something I can ask a system. I want to know. Second is career advice. These are the two things I'll be very happy to have somebody who comes and tells me a third one. But these are two big ones where it really matters for an employee to have a touch point with HR. And these are meaningful ones. Here, now you create a robot who answers generic questions, that's okay. But how do we put together, and this is the question I ask myself as an HR leader, how could I redeploy my team better? So what we did is we used technology to clarify out all the, so we have a shared services, so I guess most companies will have. We created an additional layer on top who would get into more personal matters. And we have a coaching service which is built on HR as well as business guys where employees request for that service and it's career advice, pure career advice. I want to change, in, it's not just I want to find a role, I want to grow, you know, information technology, I want to develop in machine learning, what are the skills. There's an actual conversation and we've invested in people in these competencies. And that way, we're really looking at HR from a change management perspective. It's also HR, HR's own change management that you have to manage. You've removed the transaction part. You've given it, used leverage technology to standardize that so the business still gets a response. But you're making your HR business partners truly do leadership coaching, uh, you know, uh, change management, business design, all of that. So that's just an example of how we yeah. are looking at it. I'll quickly talk about one interesting employee engagement uh, uh, philosophy that we follow, right? So we uh, we do follow an employee engagement philosophy which is uh, democratic in its true sense because it is by the people, of the people, and for the people. Um, so, uh, and the way we use technology is that we create a, a very automatic leaderboard because it is by the people or, and consisting of the people, you really are, uh, you know, reliant on volunteers from the employees. Um, so from the business, and, and it is often, I'm sure all of you will agree, very difficult to get people to volunteer because they feel it is extra work, extra effort, and you know there's probably nothing in it for me. Um, so we've created a, 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 a dashboard of sorts that provides points for every volunteering activity that individuals do, um, and then creates a leaderboard out of it. So every individual is able to actually see real time where you know, in the leaderboard they stand with respect to their voluntary contribution to contributing to various employee engagement activity, battery of employee engagement activities that are available in the platform, right? Called, I mean, we call the platform Tally Unlimited Recreation and Fun Factory. It's called the Turf Club. <laughs> but, but people can participate, right? People can participate, but it's, you, you have something in it. You can participate, and if you actually are a project manager for a huge event that you organize for the organization, you get 100 points. And then eventually you get to move up the ladder. It's a professional body. You start from a, a, a volunteer to core volunteer to master volunteer to vice president to president. You know, it, So there is value proposition in it for the employee. So I think uh, all this was possible because of, because of some, at some level you, you know, one tends to leverage available technology. So the technology takes care of you know, creating the leaderboard and the dashboard for people. Very interesting. We see a, a, a huge movement towards RPA, robotic process automation. For those who are not aware, 
and, uh, and, and I'm, I'm putting this question purposefully because it deals with HR tech trends and trust me in the next two years you're going to see and hear and in fact hear and see more 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 of this and probably even deploy a lot of this. So robotic process automation is taking over. In fact, this has been existing from a long time. In the HR space, it has started to come in. So these are basically, if you have heard word, words like bots, so chat bots, you know. So HR bots are you know, becoming very popular in a lot of MNC firms where you type in and they share those you know, frequently answered questions. So what concerns me as an HR professional, and I'm sure a lot of us here is, so RPA is taking over a lot of HR related work, mundane HR work as I would call it. So, uh, what is your firm's movement towards such uh, high-end technology? So RPA is the beginning, yeah. and after that you move to someone in the earlier session was mentioning about AI and you know Watson in, in terms of machine learning, which is even more higher in terms of predictive analytics and all that. So those are different levels of uh, you know, usage of technology. But let's start with just the basic RPA. Is it can the non-technology guys start? Yes, of course. <laughs> with so is, it, is it is it threatening? HR's existence in, in, in the mundane roles? So basically, yes, uh, we've introduced bots now uh, recently. Uh, right. This is primarily for, uh, uh, for the employees for you know, policies and processes, uh, which we just introduced. We piloted it, uh, I think, a month ago. Is anybody from Nolscape there? Nolscape helped us implement that. And it has been quite uh, successful. People have taken it very well. And even the uh, pre, uh, post offer process, I mean, after the engaging uh, 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 candidates after uh, accepting the offer, uh, we have introduced uh, uh, some simulated kind of, you know, uh, modules which help them understand the organization much better before they come in and they could actually post whatever questions they want and it's kind of answered. I think definitely it's going to go a long way to help uh, connect uh, with our employees. Uh, but I also have to say that uh, I was mentioning to Ajay, I mean, uh, definitely human intervention is required. I mean, bots, <laughs> I don't see, you know, how I would be if a bot was conducting my performance review or, you know, uh, so, but then uh, they said, yes, there would be a, a time when you're <laughs> going to have that. So I, I would be retired by then. So <laughs> anyway, so over to you all. A lot of it has got automated and it's been so seamlessly done that we didn't even realize that it was actually automation that was happening. It just seemed as something that was more useful, that was something easier to happen. And we all got along the bandwagon and we've been doing it. One particular area that we found um, has been extremely helpful for us has been simulation especially used for senior levels for our trainings. So you definitely, you, this is like key positions, you don't want them to, you want them to understand the impact of their decisions, how that would make a difference to an organization. And through the business simulation, we found that incredibly useful. A lot of the other things in terms of your regular training programs, they're all available on your mobile, they're available online, you do it whenever you want to, whenever it's convenient for you. But one of the things like Venkat was talking of, is reality that a lot of the mundane tasks that we do will become completely automated. It's just a question of time, mm. which basically brings us to if that, those jobs are going to go away, what are the jobs that we should be look, focusing ourselves on? And the thing that can be looked at, which typically human beings can do and automated software cannot do, is to be able to build, you know, to pick those various elements of data that comes up maybe from an analysis, and tying it to seemingly unconnected information and say, from an organizational standpoint, this is where we can head towards. And that is what only human beings would be able to do, and that's what we, each one of us, irrespective of where we are in our journey, should be focusing on. How do you connect the seemingly unconnected? Very nice. So brilliant stuff that's happening, and I'm sure a lot of you uh, are also doing multiple or exploring multiple avenues in this space. As HR professionals, how well you, how well you are understanding the business needs, okay, effectively, leveraging the technology efficiently, and creating that competitive advantage, right? Understanding business needs effectively, 
leveraging technology efficiently and creating the competitive advantage. As HR professionals, this is the step we have to take and move towards. And if we are not moving in that, I would leave with the Bangalore parlance in the IT space as they say, either you disrupt or you get disrupted. So what's your choice? Think. We have a fantastic experience around here. Please feel free to share your questions with us. Thanks a lot uh, for the panels. Uh, it was quite an overwhelming experience. And uh, it will be a great uh, uh, to put it across in our day-to-day -day work environment also. Uh, my question is basically like uh, we have moved from a typical attendance register towards a uh, biometric enrollment. Now we have also moved to the level of clubbing the biometric enrollment to calculate the working hours to push it down towards HRAS, coming up with an employee cell service. That's fine. Now, parallelly, we also have an other card which is made it mandatory in across the, all the entitles like bank or PAN card or maybe into a level of a passport, everything. What I see there is an... Uh, uh, situation that has come where the biometric, whatever we take a print, uh, and that is gone to the level of an Aadhaar card enrollment. So there is an, uh, we have a slight threat of more than security uh, that could have a breach in terms of it. So I'd like to understand, looking at your future, like to what level the security can be so robust enough that we will be safeguarding the employee's biometric altogether so that uh, their personal entitlements will be s protected altogether here. Yeah, nothing I can I can answer some part of it. So SAP is a German f German MNC. I mean, you understand, we are governed by data protection and privacy roles, not just for the Europe and where we come from, but also in all countries that we exist. So we have very very, very significant security norms. I mean, it is the business that we are. We run the critical businesses of most of our customers. So we have very significant data protection and privacy, both from legal regulation, from internet, so from digital hacking perspective, as well as physical data securities that we have in place. But uh, even for the HR employee data to, pay, to say so, it's extremely, you know, secure and governed from multiple stakeholders. So it's not just like from pure concepts of authorizations, right? Who should have access to what information is in itself a product, right? And that's the extent to which we govern and take care. But I'm not, if probably somebody sure. else. If can I add. can just add, right? So yes, it's a huge change in terms of moving from just manual data to data being available online and therefore open to being hacked. But the reality is that this is the new reality where data is, all your information is going to be data. Data is actually, like they say, data is the new currency, right? Uh, the question is, how can you keep the data secure? And there are various ways to keep the data secure. One is in terms of what Shradhanjali talked of, access to data. How do you ensure that the data is, everybody doesn't have access, there are ways that some people can access it. The uh, next is in terms of where does your data reside? How do you go back and ensure that your data is encrypted? There are various things that can be done to definitely ensure that data is secure. All are, I mean, and one way to give an example would be, um, not too many years ago, we were all going to the banks and physically withdrawing cash or depositing cash. We then moved to a world where we make transfers online Either we are transferring money or we're getting money. And it's again online and therefore open to hacking. But that doesn't mean that we stopped our journey. We journeyed. What banks have done is they've got different levels of authentication to ensure that the data stays safe. I think you've got to look at how do, can you go back and ensure that the data stays safe. But you can't stall change. Like It's like otherwise you'll get disrupted. It's the same thing. You have to move with the times, move with the change, but find a way by which your data remains completely secure. And there are various ways to do it. There are various products available out there, and there are various methods to keep data safe. So if you've had a great time, and if you've rated us 5 out of 5 uh, in the performance scale that you're supposed to rate us, please give us a loud, loud round of applause, and off we go. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, panel. Fantastic.